You know, I was in Duluth for the first time last year and I walked I walked up to the Bob Dylan house because there's a house that Dylan was born in. He's got a childhood home. And um, and I'm outside the house and this woman comes out on the porch and she's like, Bob Dylan? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to see the house? And I'm like, sure. So she takes me and uh, takes me in a Bob Dylan's house and the, there's a husband sitting at a kitchen table reading a magazine and he sees me. He's like, Bob Dylan? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, go upstairs. And like, it's just a real <laughs> insane thing that it's wonderful it was so cool and then the woman was like you know about the armory show right and I was like no idea and I guess the last show Buddy Holly played before he died Bob was at this armory in Duluth Bob Dylan went as a teenager and was in the front row and there's a photo that I saw while I was in Duluth of Bob Dylan in the front row looking at Buddy Holly which is like so so creepy and and crazy and weird. That is great. Well, and, and look, the one thing I love, I mean, one of many things I love about Duluth is that uh, it is ridiculously easy to get in touch with anybody. Like my husband likes this um, band called Low and they're from Duluth. Um, and uh, we just Facebook, you know, message them and they said, want to get lunch today? Like, it's not like, you know, Elliot in New York, it's like, ah, uh, can we reschedule it in 2022? Um, right. I've got a window. Was it like what? Is it like Alan? It's like Alan Sparhawk in them? Alan Sparhawk and his wife Mimi. Oh We've God. been to their house now. That's wild. That's insane. Yeah. So it's just like now. It's not like LA. Like we should do it. We should, we have to hang out and then you'll see them in two years. This is like. No, they're like, now. no, we're, you're coming over, right? Yeah, no, it's really. Uh, yeah, uh, a huge fan of you guys. Is. Well, do you want to live together? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what you did. That's exactly what she did to me, though, Moses. I was like, you know, hey, I'm I'm like <laughs> we've got extra space. I've always wanted to have kids in theory, so I figure if somebody's in their 30s, it's like uh, I can handle it for three to four weeks. I'll make you eggs. Comics are so charitable sometimes, it's like insane. Like the amount of comedians who like who have hosted me in like various countries and cities, like Elaine Boozler. I did like one show with Elaine Boozler and she's like, stay at my place when I'm at like, and it's a real, like, it's a real community. That's what I miss so much about this. Like I ran into, I ran into Chris Fleming on the street a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to like grab his leg and never let go. Like, I just miss running into people. I miss the whole yeah, but not scheduling people, but like like accidentally seeing people is is um, yeah. a great way to do it. What would it take for anyone to perform again? Like, what kind of restrictions? What kind of death rate? Is anyone thinking about that, or they're just <laughs> moving on? A new president. What, the the that there's some sort of cure that that would be good because I I just wouldn't want to do a club and then somebody get ill. Yeah. On my watch. Right. That's my that's my biggest fear is like I just get an email. It's just like great show. My grandma died. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What a what a <laughs> unload to put on you. Yeah. But and that it's Tupac like, story about your mom is fucking worth it. I gotta say, it's not <laughs> that good. I'm over there with Maria where it's just like, I don't know, man. I feel like there's been times in history where we had to take a break. Yes. And it might and this might just be like, yeah, everybody take a break. Everybody I mean, I understand what Moses, you know, he was promised something that God took from him. But uh, that's how I, mean, I frame it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know? And by God, I mean deadline. <laughs> yeah, but you're fine, Jack, to be like, I'm just going to focus on other things and be a human being. I'm not fine with it. I'm, I'm, I would way rather see you guys all the time and do stand up and be drunk till 3 a.m. at the store or whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. And if you don't react and, you know, change some shit, you're going to just be a sad sack at the crib performing in that weird liminal four or five day gray space between when the world was normal and when the world was shut down. It's crazy. I feel comfortable saying this, but I said to my, I was on tour. I was like legit, legit on a tour of the UK that had a couple weeks left. And, and I said to my agent, like, hey, I think I should cancel the shows. Because Kat Cohen had canceled her shows and gone home. And I called her and I was like, is there going to be a problem? And she wrote, bro, yeah. And so my agents were like, why? What's the big deal? Like, it's not a problem. And I was like, yeah. And then my dad is a, my dad is in charge of distributing PPE now for the hospitals and universities in Massachusetts. And he called me. He's like, 
hey, uh, you know, I never tell you what to do, but maybe you should look into canceling your shows. And so I called the agents back and I was like, I want to cancel the shows. And they're like, you are so alarmist, but like we will deal with this sort of like Jewish neuroses. And this is my UK, these are my UK agents. And they're like, we, we shut it down, but I did one last show in Glasgow. And, and that night had like a real like, last dance on the Titanic feel to it. It was like a real, I was like, welcome to the last show we're gonna go to for five months. And people really, it had a special sad feeling to it that I'll never be able to forget. And those agents, by the way, like their whole company shut down. Like that, that, that they don't, it, one of them's like working as a carpenter now. My goodness. That's such a far fall. That seems like a ridiculous far from grace. Like yeah. every, every, <laughs> everybody at Quibi already has a new job. <laughs> How bad do you be like COVID's not real? Because then you have to do construction. You yeah, need to- bro. That's, that's they crazy. call that the reverse Jesus, where you go from an elevated <laughs> position back to carpentry. And see. So now he doesn't send you scripts; he just sends you tape measures. He genuinely was like, "Hey, I'm working on this table," and it, like that's the kind of thing he's like, "I'm working on this table. Do you want to be involved? We got a good part for it. No, but like." I got legs attached. Legs are attached. Uh, we're circling some stain. We're looking at mahogany. <laughs> uh, Moses the... does spend lots of time on deadline. That his that uh, <laughs> that's the uh... just keeps refreshing. Keeps refreshing every moment. Who got something? Who's doing what? Is anyone doing better than me? Must be hell to work at deadline if you have any showbiz aspirations. That every day you just get a hundred notices of people who are like who have something fun to announce. Deadline is just the school announcements of the entertainment business. <laughs> well, the it's other just thing a dude that... comes on, he's just like. Uh, in the morning, we'll have a new show with Jason Bateman and newcomer. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Right, but the the one <laughs> solid they get is when someone gets recast at the table read. When they oh. are, that makes you feel better about your entire life and the fact that you hit someone with your car in 2013. It's like, well, they showed up, they were who they are, and they weren't good enough. Oh my god, <sighs> no shot. I don't think I can up that. You, you know, your story is more beautiful, but my last performance was at the the newsstand in that lower room. Yeah, awesome, super fucking Great awesome place. room. Love the, love those people over there. Love those guys. And <laughs> I was on a scout with my buddy Richie King for a show that me and my friends were getting ready to make. And because of COVID, it all just shut down. You know, life is fine. Move on. But it was like we're making the TV show. We were scouting. <sighs> Moses knows all this. We're making a TV show. Yeah. We're scouting. We were we were like getting all the shots down. We fully went through our list. We got everybody ready to go. The Monday when ev- like the whole like when Tom Tom Hanks got it the day we shut everything down, oh and uh, Trump said he's gonna shut down all flights. And so uh, Viacom had to give me an earlier flight. Had to put me on a flight back to LA so I wouldn't be trapped in New York. I get to the, I get there and everybody from the UK is just standing in a group because they wouldn't let them fly home. Yeah. And so it was just really like scary. Like everybody was being incredibly rude to Asian people. Like I was watching the xenophobia happen in front of my eyes. Like it was, yeah. it was crazy. And then there was just like a group of some biscuit eating motherfuckers just standing off to the side with nowhere to go. Air <laughs> <laughs> fryer has changed. So funny. <laughs> I luckily got on a plane, flew over. We were like, ah, you know, this is just like people going crazy. Nope. Literally the last show I did was at the stand hanging out with like, I think it was like, who, who was there that night? <laughs> like Clayton English was with me for some reason. It was it was just a great night. And then the whole world shut down. Even live stand up now, and Moses, I'm sure your experience is different. And I'm, I'm about to like, I'm gonna do some clubs at the end of the year, but like I did a show where the stage was the back of a pickup truck. And I looked out and I was just like, what kind of world are we living in? We're just like live from the Thunderdome. You're just like, it's, every show has like a genuine post-apocalyptic feel to it. I'm with Jack a bit on Zoom shows. Like I, I do them now because I can't live without some kind of stand-up. But it feels very much like I bombed a couple weeks ago, two feet from my bed. Like <laughs> That's hard. You can't leave the venue. I, yeah. Like if I really want to look at a place I truly bombed, I have to go to like Sunnyvale, California and remember 2013, now it's just like, oh yeah, I remember three months ago where on my couch, I 
bombed like where a guy kept playing video games with his sister while i was on stage oh that's great they completely <laughs> tuned out yeah just completely just, that's that's better than not levy it's just like i it's on your a tab that's, that's, the, that's the other thing there's no like audience accountability so like when if, right. if they heckle it's like that motherfucker in Wisconsin, what you really gonna do? Yeah, he didn't come back. He'll just turn off his camera. You can't crush a heckler who lives in a like a different state. So everyone uh, can stay on except Maria. You have three seconds to say who you are. <laughs> it's out of time, so sorry. Uh, yeah, we are out of time, but this is honestly so much fun that, um, you know, I was out in a very real way having a rough morning for whatever reason, and uh, this made me feel better. So thank you for... for uh, I've been on this with me. It's just nice to see everybody coming out. It's good to see people's faces. Does anyone have anything uh, coming up that they want to uh, get the message out about? I know Jack has uh, Doomsday Mixtape, which is the podcast I was talking about, which I highly recommend. Don't fall asleep to it. It's hilarious. So good. I think Big Mouth's coming out at some point. Some other news will probably come out when white people allow me to say it. I'm giving you permission. Yeah. I can say it. I can say it. Okay, guys, guess what? <laughs> um, I've got an album out. I just put out an album because I was like, I need somehow to still be putting out stand up. But I put out an album called Until Now, which I recorded at Acme, Maria, nice. in uh, Minneapolis. So I love Acme. I love Acme. Lovely. Acme. And also, um, I've been phone banking for the Biden campaign a lot. And if people, have spare time now, you should phone bank. It's super easy and apparently it really helps. So like, I know it sounds so dumb, but like, I don't know. It'd be really nice to have a new president in a couple of weeks. So so maybe- Just don't ruin my birthday. Is that your birthday, Jack? My, bir my birthday is the sixth. So whatever happens on the third, I know the voting is probably gonna take one to two weeks to actually get everything together. And I know they're gonna try and destroy the election. We can talk about this another day, but just like, let me at least, if you're gonna, if you're gonna either blow Biden out the water and we're like, we live in a terrible place, don't make it some weird contention that my birthday is awkward. Yeah, <laughs> right. Everyone needs to phone bank. We're good. not doing any birthday. Either, yeah, either Biden blows him out or Trump blows him out, but I need my day. You need your day. It's important to uh, scream. And that's, very Scorpio. that's yeah. very Scorpio. That's very Scorpio. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maria, <laughs> you have anything coming up that people should check out? I have a free Audible book that you can get on uh, Audible um, called You Are a Comedy Special. Um, it's about two hours long, and it's a 15-step guide how to write your own uh, one-hour comedy. Force How to force yourself. Force yourself. Force yourself. Write a full it. hour of comedy. Because uh, uh, that's what I have to do. Um, it doesn't come naturally. Anyway, yeah. so that, that's the only thing I have to plug. Great. Also, you're yep. selling two vibrators in case anybody is curious. <laughs> well, I have to say those have been saged They've and been put saged. in a local trash for Duluth, Minnesota. It's illegal to sell things that have been saged. Um, that, that's our show. <laughs> this is this is uh, so fun. I don't, a very personal. Thank you, level. Moses. Yeah. Yay, Moses, thank you, Moses. It's so nice buddy. to see you guys. It's thank so you so nice much. So nice to see you, Maria thank Bamford, you. Alex Edelman, and Jack Knight. Uh, thank you, and and hang in there. Hope you have a great week. Bye. Bye.